Um, so again, uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys, and, and then really it's a pleasure for me to, to be actually speaking in front of you all, no, quite virtually. So hopefully by next year, it's a, a bit better. Diba? But really, I wanted to talk about the future of hybrid work or the future of work, which is hybrid. And really, uh, my focus is really on how do we transition to hybrid work. Uh, and so to start it off, no, I actually saw a nice quote from our office. So this one actually in our digital signage, lumalabas, that everybody loves a good comeback story. Diba? And may nakita ko mga hugot lines kanina, but really if you think about it, no, um, how does this relate to my talk? So for the most part, diba, everyone has been in the, at home, diba, we, na, medyo nakulong tayo lahat sa bahay for about a year and a half to two years, diba, depending on, on kung sino naman yung um, kausap nyo or, kung sino yung, or what type of office you're in. Uh, and what we're seeing now no, is that as the pandemic is, is already hopefully behind us, diba, is, is now we're actually seeing a return to the office. So that's why everybody loves a good comeback story. Our offices are now becoming open, but to actually welcome us back into you know, um, into our regular work environment. But if you think about it, no, is it really going to be a regular work environment? By what we like to think, or what Cisco um is saying, or what we've heard from the market as well, is that the future of work is actually going to be a hybrid work environment. And when we say it's a hybrid work environment, Hindi siya parang nasa pandemic tayo na lahat tayo work from home. So hybrid work is actually not remote work. Diba? It's not just remote work, but it's also diba, our work now. And when you start to go back to your offices, it's not also going to be exactly like what it was before the pandemic. And I will show you what are the key differences diba, of what is work now going to look like when we're back in the office versus what it was before. But Safe to say, but when it will not be the same office you know, that you actually left two years ago, there will be a lot of different use cases also. Diba? Because if you think about it, marami na tayo natutunan when we were working from remote, when we were working remotely. And a lot of those that we still carry over today. Just look at the BPO sector for, um, as an anecdote. Diba? The BPO sector in April, diba, the Department of Labor said, they're already asked to go back 100% back to the office. Anong sinabi nila? Pwede bang i-delay ng konti? Because they've also seen the value of remote work. They've seen the value of being flexible enough to take your workloads outside of just doing it in the office. And so what we're seeing is that diba, the future of work being hybrid means that you should be able to take your work and do your work not just 100% at home, not 100% in the office, but actually being able to move from place to place, and then your work should still be seamless. Diba? That if I work some days at home and some days in the office, that I can be equally productive regardless of where I am. Just to give you an idea, the Cisco, our offices have been open since April. Ang setup namin is that we're not required to go to the office. We can actually go to the office at any point in time na gusto namin pumasok, if we have meetings, for example, or if we just want to see our office mates, we can go to work. But there's no set schedule for us you know, to be in the office or to be at home. So what we're seeing is that hybrid work is different from what, was, what it was before. And it's also a bit harder. On the one hand, it's dynamic. So meaning, hindi is, there is no cookie cutter formula for hybrid work. But for some of us, it will be team A, team B. Diba? Meaning uh, by shifts, and then we actually, um, first half of the week or first two weeks, for example, it's a different team, and then we, we switch over. But for other organizations, it would be like Cisco. Diba? Bahala ka if you want to go to the office. Um, it's up to you. You will be measured on your outcome, on your, out, on your output. So again, no, it will differ from, case, from company to company and even down to employee to employee. Because there will be employees who would, be more productive in the office, there will be employees diba, who are going to be more productive when they're mobile. The other thing we wanted to highlight is that hybrid work is going to be permanent. So if you're thinking diba, dati when we when the pandemic started, we felt that remote work is going to be is going to pass diba, and eventually we'll go back to the office. That's true. But now that we've gone back to the office, this setup, diba, this 
this setup that we have here, you know, wherein we have people who are still remote and people who are in the office, this seems to be a more permanent setup because we've learned a lot during the time that we were remote. We've learned that there are benefits of being remote, diba? whether that is I productive naman pala ako kahit nasa bahay, or I don't have to go through traffic because I live, for example, in Farview. Diba? For those of you who know Metro Manila, I live in Fairview, which, is, which diba, lovingly we call Fairview. So I live in Fairview. It takes me two hours to get to the office one way. If I was just going to do emails, diba, okay na ako sa bahay. So if you look at it, we've learned a lot during that pandemic na kaya pala maging, maging productive. And so when we start to go back to the office, I think a lot of us are also thinking, how do you incorporate diba, and mix and match on-premise or in-person meetings and in-person work and remote work. And if we're going to see or if we accept that it is permanent, that it is dynamic, then hybrid work is also mission critical. And when we say it's mission critical, we have to start planning you know, as if it was a very important part of the way we do our work. It's important because if we start to do hybrid work, it will affect the way we do our work the way we relate to our employees, the way we retain talent, as well as the way we will be able to adapt when another knock on wood pandemic happens. So when we start to go back to the office, now we just wanted to highlight, we did a study, um, a, a study last year, you know, asking our customers, you know, what would the return to office be like? Not everyone will be in person. So meaning that when we start to go back to the office, it isn't going to be like February of 2020. We will, yes, we, for the most part, some of you will probably have a lot of people in the office, but there will always be people who are outside the office that you have to work with, whether these are employees, by your coworkers, or your customers. I don't know if you've had this experience already oh, in the two months that I've been in the office in and out, Marami pa rin ako meetings na even if it was face to face, meron pa rin sa saling hindi. Meron pa rin sa saling remote. Diba? We we just conducted for example a training for our resellers face to face in our office. And then there were people who were remote. Diba? There were people who did not join. And so we had to make sure that it was also broadcast no like this um over Webex. In person meeting will probably not be full time. Diba? There will be instances where you will be asked but to do your work elsewhere uh, and so there are those changes usage patterns will also change but if people are hybrid if people are not always expected to be in the office then the way they do their work also changes and it will also affect by your infrastructure it will affect the way you you design your offices and so on and then when we start to expand that beyond just the way we do internal work, diba? when we expand the view, na hindi lang siya about, diba sa tendency when we talk about hybrid work, it's always internal looking. It's always introspect, introspect, uh, introspective. It's always introspective. Diba? Now we always look at it na, this is how my employees will do work. This is how I will do work in my context. But then when you start to expand that scope diba? and look at, how you relate to your customers, how do you relate to your suppliers, etc. Then the stakes are different. So, for example, if you start to do events, conventions, diba yung mga, like this one, if you if eventually the BST decides to open it up not to face to face again, like what we did before, can you actually migrate it to a hybrid event? Can you actually incorporate for people who are remote, despite the fact that you have a very large event, you have a very large event with several tracks. Diba? So these things you not know, have to come into consideration because when we were in the pandemic, we learned that we can actually work remotely. We learned that we can actually work virtually and we've seen diba, that we can reach out to more people. So now that we're going back to the office, now that we've actually opened up our offices, we have to also reconsider, diba? are we doing things the right way? Are we maximizing technology? And are we being able to, to take advantage of all the opportunities that, we're, that are now available because we learned so much in two years? 
So other things that I wanted to highlight before we go into the meat of it is that just a few figures I wanted to throw out. Sa mga nag hire na mga Gen Z, Gen X, ah, Gen X ako yun, sorry, Gen Z, Millennials, and so on. So sa mga nag hire na mga younger people, right? The younger people, the fresh grads, they value flexibility more than anything else. So 64% of people say that the ability to work from anywhere will affect their decision making if they wanted that job or not. So it becomes a question of, but do I want to attract these people to work for me? The other thing we wanted to highlight you know, is that when we start to go back to our offices, I mentioned this earlier, 98% of all meetings moving forward will have at least one remote participant. So imagine yung lahat ng mga face-to-face -face meetings nyo that you've done in the last three months since nag-alert level one tayo. Most of those meetings may pasaway. Di ba? May pasaway na attendee na magre-remote na lang at magda-dial in. Di ba? Or for whatever valid reason, di ba? They wanted, it's, it's more convenient for them to be remote. But if you think about it, almost all of your meetings moving forward have at least one remote participant. And you have to start to fix to factor that in when you go back to the office. Yung challenge Jan is that actually is actually the statistic that comes after. If 98% of all of my meetings have at least one remote participant, note naman that only 6.4% of all meeting rooms have video devices in it. So what do I mean by that? Tingnan nyo yung mga conference rooms nyo, lalo na if hindi pa kayo nagre-refurbish ng, ng, ng work offices nyo. Or if you haven't been back to your office, but try to imagine what your office was like two years ago. You have a lot of conference rooms, diba? but ilan lang doon ang may video conferencing device, may cameras and microphones. Most likely 10% or less. Diba? Because a lot of the meetings before always happen face-to-face. -face. When I had a meeting with a supplier, with a customer, with, a, um, with, a, with co-workers, diba? we always expected to be there. So, bihira na may, may remote. So, then it wasn't as important to have a video device inside your meet, inside your office or inside your conference room. But if 98% of all of your meetings will have at least one remote participant, hindi naman productive for the people in the meeting room, in the conference room, but to all have laptops and all log in just because one person decided not to go to the office face-to-face. -face. So, again, there's that, there's that struggle or there's that challenge, diba? Almost all meetings will have one remote participant, pero most meeting rooms do not are not equipped you know, for video conferencing. So other things we wanted to highlight is that when you start planning for hybrid work, hindi lang sa IT problem. It is actually a, a teamwork, so to speak, na between IT, HR, facilities, and sometimes diba, other LOBs as well, lines of businesses as well. Bakit IT? Siyempre, kung nag-run tayo ng technology, IT will be in the best position to tell you diba, how to deploy these things, but also to consider how do you manage it later on and how do you make sure that it's all secure. HR is, again, because it's tools affecting people, then it, 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 they will be involved. And then facilities, because as we start looking at it later on, diba, when you start deploying these technologies and when you start planning for hybrid work, kailangan nyo pa ba yung same space that you have? Diba? Or, or is the way your offices are the way it's, your offices are set up, is that the most convenient way for you to allocate your space and use it correctly? Other things no, is that we wanted to highlight if drilling down into IT is that hybrid work is not just a collaboration problem. So I know I'm in the collaboration business. No, I actually take care of collaboration for Cisco. But we also wanted to highlight that when we start planning for hybrid work, it's not just about deploying meeting solutions, video devices, and means of communication. You also have to factor in the network side of it, as well as the security side of it. But the moment we start to deploy video, uh, we start to roll out different ways of working, Diba? It has an impact on how we have to secure our assets. Diba? Because we have to make sure that as we give them more capabilities, dapat kaya rin natin to secure yung, yung assets natin. Hi. Hi. Sino man ang hindi nakamit. Um, and then also, it has an impact on the networking side. Diba? That as we start deploying these solutions, and I will show you a graphic later 
on how on the impact to the network. We also have to plan to make sure that, well, that if this is the way of work, this is the way work, work will happen, but that we have to make sure that it will be sustainable by our infrastructure. Okay, so design considerations for hybrid work. One, we have to reimagine the way our offices are laid out. We have to reimagine what you can do in those offices. Number two, we have to reimagine as well how people will start to work. I mean, how do you make use the assets that you have and transform that into making them more flexible so that they can work regardless of where they're at? And then lastly, now you have to always consider security and manageability. So with that, now um, I'll go into the meet and show you some examples of what we've done and how you can implement it as well. Uh, but I wanted to start off with a quick video of our office, of the way we've restructured our office in Pennsylvania, New York. Today, businesses have to create workspaces that attract and retain the best talent, ensure employee well-being, and support their net zero journey. These spaces also have to adapt to more hybrid, flexible ways of working. At the core of today's real estate strategies is digital transformation. The ability to deliver an exceptional employee experience while measuring and optimizing your real estate portfolio is now the new norm. The use of data and technology to optimize and transform your real estate portfolio is the foundation for unlocking the true value of space. We know that a smart building is an important real estate strategy and you can't manage what you cannot measure. Given we are a technology company, we actually had the data and visibility to make informed decisions. With the dollars we saved, we were able to redefine the value of real estate by deploying smart building technology. And so we defined the outcomes and metrics we needed and applied Cisco's smart building tools to our own building, Pen1 in New York City. Cisco challenged us to make technology the foundation for the design of this space. It needed to be factored into everything we did. What made this project really interesting to work on is that unlike most projects, we actually designed with the technology first and built the architecture around it. It's interesting because today, technology is what's transporting us into the future. The ability to use a digital infrastructure for a better user experience and to manage their real estate portfolio was at the center of what we designed for Cisco. The pandemic has caused organizations to re-examine the value of real estate. By using technology as the fourth utility, companies are now able to measure their outcomes from their real estate strategy and ensure a better employee experience, all while reducing both CapEx and OpEx. For example, here at Pen1, which is 54,000 square feet, we started by defining the outcomes and areas we needed to measure. This included occupancy, space utilization, indoor air quality, energy usage, and 92 video endpoints, all while ensuring a better user experience for our employees. Intelligence comes from when you are able to connect and control previously discrete systems. With occupancy data, we can connect with environmental monitoring and control air quality, temperature, and humidity by automatically adjusting blinds, lighting, HVAC settings, and more. This ultimately provides a better user experience while also significantly reducing our energy costs. Smart buildings like this one support Cisco's commitment to become net zero for all greenhouse gas emissions by 2040 and can help businesses increase efficiency and productivity while cutting energy costs and reducing wastes. The digital real estate revolution has begun. Technology is the new fourth utility and organizations that are taking advantage of this will have a clear competitive advantage. Cisco understands the evolving demands in today's real estate market, and we can help you with your digital real estate transformation journey. Between building a real estate strategy that meets today's needs and embracing digital transformation for tomorrow, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. And so that was a very quick video you know, of our new offices in, in, in Pennsylvania and New York. Uh, hopefully it will translate now into the Philippines. We're waiting for that. Uh, but we also wanted to share with you, you know, that when we started to look at workspaces and reimagine that for the employees or for the people, for the people who are working, we're not just looking at the office. We're actually looking at several workspaces from the home all the way to um, shared office spaces, hot desks, conference rooms, and everywhere in between. Uh, 
So for example, breaking it down, if we were to look at a hybrid environment and we say that our workforce will be hybrid moving forward, then we also have to look at the home office because the homes where when people start working remote, if this is a permanent setup, then IT has to look at the home office or the home setup you know, as a remote branch of your office. Hindi kasi pwede, diba, that your employees are going to be starting to work from home and then they have connectivity issues. They have quality issues. So we also looked at diba, how can we actually help people when they start look, working at home. Um, so just a sample diba, that we have to look some design considerations. Cameras will be very important. So here there's a video endpoint. It may or may not be a video endpoint. It could be a USB camera. Um, but you have to have secure connectivity as well diba, to make sure na that that you will be able you know, to have that seamless connection to your meetings and so on. Um, also, noise cancellation and noise suppression becomes a very important tool when you're at home because it's not like in the office now where it is a very controlled environment. Um, so I won't go through the details of the products, but we do have a lot of products around what we can deploy to desks and homes. Uh, and then this is how Cisco does it in the US and in the larger company, uh, larger countries. So if you are a new hire in the in the larger um, areas, so for example, the US, you will actually get as a welcome kit a Meraki um, uh, um, wireless access point. You will get a headset, you'll get an Apple keyboard, a MacBook Air, and then a desk camera. So I wish I was a new hire, but I'm not, so I'm not qualified for this. But aside from that, no, it's not just the devices, but we also looked at the tools and applications that are needed to support you. So then you have video conferencing. You have multi-factor security already built into your devices. You have um, networking and then the visibility across that network so that IT can actually manage your environment and know and troubleshoot if you have connectivity issues. So if you look at it, and I'm not going into the products in detail, but if you look at it, when we plan to to um, support remote workers. It wasn't just giving them devices. It was also making sure that their experience is um, top notch, but also that you can manage, you not know, you can manage the, the 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 deployment so that IT has that visibility even down to the employee level, even down to the remote work level. Um, when we start to talk about the office, now there are three different areas that we're looking at. Now, that will probably be changed when we go back to our offices. One, we're seeing a rise in hot desking. We're seeing a rise in shared spaces. We're also seeing a rise in open spaces that are used for planning and for um, brainstorming. And then, of course, your typical conference rooms more. So when we start to look at the office, and I, it, it was briefly shown in the, in the Cisco Pen 1 um, video, we look at the if I was going to make a hybrid office, I have to have several things you know, that we wanted to, to highlight. One, office occupancy. How do I know, you know if I was a remote a hybrid worker? How would I know if I go to the office, meron ba akong upuan? Or marami bang tao ngayon and I'd rather not go to the office because it's not so there's no social distancing. So your tools or your application should be able to track office occupancy. And we do this in several ways, but we can actually do this from our Meraki access points, which determine the number of devices and people who are there. Our CCTV cameras can also capture office occupancy. So we capture all of that information. We publish it to our employees so that you have that information before coming in. Desk utilization. So if we're going to do hot desking, how do I know how to reserve a space? How do I know there are still open workspaces that I can go to? Um, digital signage, how do you ma maximize um, your digital signage and get, inform people? We also have solutions around wayfinding. So if you have large campuses and you don't know where everything is because you're because everyone is now flexibly working and you can work anywhere, then how do you move around so you can actually do indoor ways? And then there are a lot of other different use cases and scenarios we can help you with you know, when you actually start to design your intelligent workspace. So I talked about shared seating and hot desking. So this is a quick study that eventually we will start moving to a more um, hot desk or shared space um, setup. If you look at it, the percentage is 
in the next two years, no, we'll actually deploy some sort of shared desking. And it makes sense, diba? Because remember, a lot of us, when we start to plan to go back to the office, hindi naman siya 100% back to the office, eh. For some of us, because of social distancing, 50%, 70%. But the previous design diba, of office spaces is one is to one. One cubicle, one employee. If only 50% of my employees are going to the office, then that means that 50% of my desks are unutilized. And sayang yung space. Pero facilities, diba, real estate, will still be charged for the entire space. So that's why a lot of organizations are now rethinking the way they do it, that I don't need as many cubicles. But if I decrease the number of cubicles, those cubicles now become hot desks. So how then do you deploy a hot desking solution? So with that in mind, we've also created solutions around hot desking. We've created um, a setup so that you can actually do a hot desk setup. You can actually bring your 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 meetings regardless of, or your identity regardless of where you want to sit. So then we have um, USB cameras that are connected to your third party monitors. We have new devices for hot desking so around, uh, which also allow you to do video conferencing so that you don't need to worry about logging into different spaces. So um, these are just some of the devices. If you want to know more about them, I ask you to reach out to BST and then we can actually schedule Know, a deeper discussion around what we call the desk hub, which is our new um, hot desking appliance, the desk cameras, and then the heads, headsets. Now, moving all over to open spaces where we actually do a lot of the ad hoc meetings or planning, you also have to make sure now, that you have the proper devices for that. And so here, you're, what you're seeing is a smart whiteboard. Now for and, and I know there are a lot of smart whiteboards out in the market. For us, it's the WebEx Board Pro. Um, and so these whiteboards you now actually serve as not just a traditional whiteboard, but also as a video conferencing device. We also have CCTV cameras that we put around the place so, so that you can actually monitor um, usage and, and space utilization and, and so on. So again, I showed you what are the devices there. Now I won't go into details, but having a video device in those spaces becomes very important lalo na because nga, remember what i told you earlier not every meeting in every meeting not everyone is going to be there so having the ability you not know, to share and to talk to people even if they're not in that space to actually do whiteboarding even if they're not in that space becomes very in, in, important as well moving forward and then we go to the conference rooms so what you'll notice here is that the conference rooms now also have to have video devices. So remember that discussion I told you earlier, not every conference room has a video device. If I was going to have a meeting and there was no video device there, and then we have five attendees who are remote, it is not, it's not a very good experience if everyone is actually logging into a laptop or if there's only one laptop and then you have an external screen and then lahat kayo magkukumpul around that laptop just to accommodate five people who are remote. Diba? So again, video devices become very important. But the other thing we wanted to highlight you know, is that these video devices also have to, to as much as possible, you know, minimize the look, uh, the, 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 the aesthetics. So meaning that the devices, if you can have a video device in touch panel that can also control lighting, can control your Crestron controller and so on, then it will simplify you know, your conference room setup. Because what we also don't want to see you know, are multiple remote controls inside your conference room, because then it becomes very confusing for your employees. Um, the other thing is that within conference rooms, you also have to monitor health and safety. So pro provide sensors for air quality, lighting, um, noise, and so on but also the ability you know, to count the number of people in the room and advise you if you've actually exceeded social distancing. So we have those technologies, those technologies are available you know, for us to ensure you know, that when we roll out smart offices, that we also make sure that they're safe offices. So I wanted also to talk about why it is important for us to look at you know, um, outfitting video devices inside your offices. Imagine that well, this is actually Cisco's internal WebEx data center traffic. So pre-pandemic was the, are the numbers that you see on the left. And then 
throughout the pandemic, our traffic, our network traffic increased 16 times. Diba? So we've seen a spike in our network traffic because of the pandemic, because of everyone logging in. Um, but this is how you see it diba? As when you were working from home. Every video conferencing solutions provider, if you turn on your video, if you turn on, if you start screen sharing, and if everyone's turning on their video, it roughly on the average no, will actually require two Mbps. So that's two Mbps connectivity from every user that logs into a meeting. Diba? So you've always asked me, some of you who I've talked to, you've always asked me, diba, ano yung bandwidth requirements ni WebEx? Ano yung bandwidth requirements ni Zoom? Ano yung bandwidth requirements ni Microsoft Teams? But for the most part, on the average, if you turn on your video, if everyone turns on their video, and if you start sharing um, presentations and, and files across to Mbps, diba? lahat ng vendors, it will, it will roughly scale up to that. This is not a problem when everyone is remote. Diba? Because when everyone is remote, that's two Mbps connectivity from, the, from your point of origin, so from your home. Pag nag-return to work na tayo, all of that to Mbps traffic, because everyone is still going to do some virtual meeting in, despite the fact that they're in the office, all of that traffic now loads into your corporate network. And that's why diba, we've had some discussions with some customers na we had to rethink our network because suddenly everyone's using internet. Diba? Everyone who needs to connect out um, and they're, they're passing through our, um, our network connectivity within our office. So this is a customer um, who said diba, that we did not plan for 200 people in the office to do video conferencing from their desk. Diba? So, and why are they doing it from their desk and not using conference rooms? Because the conference rooms do not have video devices. So we can help you minimize the network traffic required. So one is by implementing um, video devices in conference rooms, but also the other way you know, is actually to look at how do we also optimize the traffic that happens within you know, um, your, your network when you're doing video conferencing. So when we start to redesign these offices, we also want to make sure that it is a frustration-free experience for everyone. So one of these things now that we wanted to highlight is seamless scheduling. I, I won't go through everything that you see here, but I wanted to highlight seamless scheduling. Why is this important? If you look at it, um, and I know a lot of you are already deploying some application or another for conferencing. It could be WebEx, it could be Microsoft Teams, it could be Google, or it could be Zoom. Uh, and you're saying that that is something that we will be using most of the time. And I will highlight most. Because the reality is, even if I've standardized on those applications, there will always be a meeting that requires me to use something else. Diba? So, for example, I'm in Cisco, we use WebEx. But if a customer tells me, ah, I'm using another vendor, I'm, an, I'm using another provider, I'm using another conferencing solution, use that. I can't tell him, diba na, sorry, di pwede WebEx kami. And that also goes through. Uh, it rings true for you. Diba? You may be using it internally, but if your customer tells you, diba? if your VIP customer tells you to use another platform, you have to use that platform. Diba? You can't tell them, di pwede. And so when you start deploying video conferencing equipment in your meeting rooms, diba? I won't name names, I won't name brands, diba? but if you look at it, most of those video conferencing devices, when you buy them, they're already specific to a conferencing solution. Diba? There are rooms systems that are that are highlighted for specific conferencing solution. And that seems to be good on the surface. But if you think about it, when you start to go back to the office, what happens if, for example, my meeting from one to two is WebEx, my meeting from two to three is Zoom, my meeting from three to four is Microsoft Teams, and my meeting from four to five is Google Meet. If that is all scheduled in the same conference room. Can I use my video endpoint to actually join all of those conference meetings one after the other without calling IT, without calling facilities to reset the device and to configure it to run another application? So that is something that we wanted 
our customers to be aware of. But that when you start planning these things, make sure you know, that you also plan for all the situations, including that 10% of meetings that will not happen on your pl preferred platform. So for us, our video devices will run and interoperate with other vendors. It will interoperate with Zoom, with Microsoft, with Teams, and oh, well, sorry, and Google Meet. So if you look at this screen very quickly, you'll see um, that thing, that green button to join for a WebEx meeting. And if you look very clear uh, closely to the screen, you'll also see that there's a Microsoft Teams meeting, a Zoom meeting, and a Google Meet meeting, and they all have a green button to join. So meaning that I can actually jump into those meetings without needing to reset the device. Also, now we wanted to highlight that if you're going to do this, but that normally in, the, in a conference room, pag sumalis sila sa meetings nyo, maliit siya. Kasi diba, it's the camera view and then unless someone speaks it and it, it zooms into that, what you're seeing is just four people but they're very small. We're rolling out people focus in the next few months. So meaning that it will optimize the view you know, of that meeting despite the fact that they're in a conference room. So this is a traditional call, what it looks like when people focus is in play. Diba? So then you see that the people who are in the meeting room get a bigger view so then you can actually see their faces. The one thing we this will be available by next month. So this is not a future enhancement that we will not roll out until next year. This is available by next month or in the next two months, depending on your rollout schedule. Um, but we also wanted to highlight that this is also available on third party meeting services. So our devices will provide people focus even if it's not on WebEx. Diba? So we, we will be rolling out now this because we want to make sure now that your hybrid environment works well for you, that our devices, when we start to roll out features, will also be available when you're using another meeting service. Again, noise cancellation. So just wanted to highlight diba, that when you start to work hybrid, uh, and this is a diba, challenge when you go back to the office and then you still have to jump into a video conference. Diba, that background noise removal is important. We actually have um optimized for my voice. So if I was in a cafe and people were talking behind me, you will not hear their voices. And then optimize for all voices if you're in a conference room because of obviously you want everyone in that room to hear you. So I can do a quick demo of that um, when you ask for it because I don't have the time for it today, but but we do have that available um, in WebEx. Okay, so moving into flexible work styles, one of the things I wanted to highlight is that not every but we always think about hybrid work as meetings and events. What we wanted to highlight is that not all meetings and events are of the same scale and of the, the same importance. So you will have internal meetings, you will have board meetings, you will have large conferences and all hands meetings. The reason we wanted to highlight this is that if you think about it, is that a lot of us tend to think if I have a meetings platform, it's good enough for all of those use cases. In reality, if, you, if you're being very honest with yourself, you would probably notice that in your organization, IT may have deployed something, but marketing is using something else for external communications. So chances are you're using two meetings providers and not one. Why? Because depending on the type of meeting, depending on the type of event, there are some solutions that are better fit for us to, um, for those types of use cases. So what we've done, you know, is actually look at there are different types of meetings, there are different types of importance for those meetings, and do we have a solution that will actually cover all of that? So on our end, no, we'd like to think we do, but because we did a lot of improvements in WebEx, including um, some of them I'll just highlight. So one is that we looked at hybrid events. So we actually, and when we talk about hybrid events, this is not all fully virtual and not all fully in person. So we actually have event solutions that will cater to a hybrid event, allow you to do multiple conferencing, multiple breakout rooms, multiple different schedules, different agenda builders, uh, all with the view that this is the way that it's going to do, be happening moving forward. So just as an example, Cisco Live, which is happening right now, is actually a hybrid event meaning that people are attending in person, but it's also broadcast not to everyone who wanted to join virtually. The other thing that we want, we did you know, when we planned for Cisco Live in Las Vegas was that we weren't even sure you know, that Las Vegas, that even if you book it early, 
that come June, come June, diba, that people will be allowed to fly. Kasi diba, if the pandemic suddenly ranks, um, ranks up in, in the US, baka ma-cancel yung event. So we were ready to take Cisco Live fully virtual if that happened. And we were able to, we would be able to do that if it happened that suddenly no one would be able to fly. So these are the things that you have to also consider you know, when you start planning for these things, uh, for, for the moving forward. The other thing we wanted to highlight is that although calling was not as seen as important over the past two years when we were in the pandemic, what we're seeing now is that calling is coming back. But that people are now starting to look back at their IT telephony, at their corporate telephony solution. But the key difference here is that it has to be flexible, meaning that if another pandemic happens and it forces us to work from home, dapat kaya ko ng dalin ng ang corporate phone call with me. So it doesn't, it's not a wasted investment. People will still be able to call me on my direct line even if I'm at home. Uh, we also our um our customers are also looking at the how do you expand to digital experiences and we have solutions for that i won't go into detail right now but know that the as people are becoming more um more uh exposed to digital uh, to web web interactions and, and chat that you have to also accommodate all of that and then i will now move quickly to the last few slides on manageability one we wanted to highlight now that as you roll these things out, you can't fix what you can't see. So it is very important when you plan these things and that you're, that IT knows how to manage them. The other thing, and I showed you earlier, there is increasing network demand. So you have to be able to figure out how do you manage that also? How do you um, manage your facilities and then also treat the home as an extension office? So very quickly, because I know I'm running out of time, one, we can manage everything from for our management portal, so Control Hub manages all of our um, collaboration portfolios. So that includes meetings, web um, devices, messaging, even the video endpoints, even the headsets, even the desk cameras. We can actually manage all of that from a single pane of glass. Uh, we also have network visibility. So meaning not just the visibility within your um, corporate network, but also when it hits the public network, but because when you start to work remote, when you start to work hybrid, hindi lang palagi, it's not anymore just the four walls of my office. And that is my network scope. Diba? Because if you have people who are remote, if they have issues, we can't always say bandwidth mayan or network connectivity mayan sa bahay. Having the ability to see how that, trans, how, how that connects right down to the last mile becomes very important for us to plan this out as well. Um, again, we can configure the network and we have those different tools because uh, we are a network provider as well. And then lastly, you know, for facilities, this is a very quick view of what we can do with DNA spaces. We can actually give you a layout of your office, see what the occupancy level is, see what the air quality is, see all of the office spaces that are being used, what meeting rooms are being used, what desks are being used. All of that DNA spaces can actually pull together the different um, information from networking from collaboration and even from security and actually display that you know, for, for our customers so just to wrap up you know, why should you work with us or why should you contact us one we can help you reimagine your workspaces we can help you deploy flexible work styles we make sure you know, that security and manageability is important and lastly we are actually doing it so Cisco is not just saying it, we're actually implementing it. We've reduced our real estate footprint. We've invested in home product productivity and, and so on. So I'd like to stop here now and I'd like to thank everyone for being very patient. Um, and hopefully now you've learned something from this. <laughs>